The following is a presentation of Retro Sports Network, home of the champions of the past, present, and or future. This is Retro Sports Network, and yes, we are about to go through the complete history of Major League Baseball. Well, from 1901 on afterwards. All right, first of all, first to first off, we're going to be using OOTP out of the park 20 to do this complete sim. Well, the sim's already been run. It's been running all throughout this Friday afternoon. I'm taping this on October 11th. I have no idea except for a couple things what we are about to see, who was the most successful team. But first, first, uh, special thanks to ID Jester. And if you to his channel you should be he gifted me this game i've played most of the 20 versions of out of the park baseball pretty much since oh gosh maybe version two so throughout the 21st century i've done various things been in various leagues have my likes and dislikes about the game but that's not for here nor there so he was kind enough when it's out first went on sale on on steam for the postseason to me the game and so I think it's first and fair most to say thank you so much so this is my third try at this the first try I set it up with uh, real life uh, just as a general thing you start from 1901 and full minor leagues well once you get to like the 40s and such it takes forever to play because it's trying to play leagues for 16 teams and so I think it would still be trying to sim that Number try number two was I started in 1901, imported all the history and let the computer draft as it was, and that was fine. Except for the fact that for American League teams like the Boston Red Sox, which have no history prior to 1901, it was trying to shove in people from Louisville and stuff from other leagues. So this third try is uh, from 1901 forward. It has real life transactions and it has real life. Uh, daily lineups. So if it would be like if you had just taken whatever your favorite sim is and simmed 119 years of baseball history. Are you ready? Let's do this. I honestly haven't looked. And never mind the f the Yankees are showing there. When it first started, it was the Orioles. History Index. Okay, we get a World Series every year. And wow, the Boston Red Sox won the first two, or won the 19-3 series. Let's do this. The winningest team second time around are the Dodgers with 12 World Series and the Yankees with 12 World Series. They did make the playoffs 43 times. The San Francisco New York Giants have won 10 World Series. The Chicago White Sox have won nine. How about that? The Oakland A's have won seven. Well, the A's have won seven. Pittsburgh, St. Louis, six. Cleveland and Boston with five. Atlanta, Boston, and Milwaukee with five. Detroit, five. The Angels, four. That's interesting. The Reds, only four. The Phillies, four. Orioles, Browns, three. Milwaukee, three. That's interesting. Kurt Bergman will be excited about that. The Cubs have won three. The Astros have won three. The Mets have won three. The Expos Nationals have won two. Seattle, two. Toronto, two. Colorado, one. The Rangers won. I knew that. It's one of the few things I knew. Tampa Bay's won a World Series. And the Twins have won only one. Wow. Uh, Arizona, San Diego. San Diego's never made the playoffs. Wow. And Miami has made the playoffs, but never won a World Series. So teams that made the playoffs the most, the Yankees, the Dodgers, the Giants, and the Cardinals are all over 30. Cleveland, Oakland, Boston and it and the Braves over twenty, and then the White Sox, the Reds, and the Pirates. Okay. Let's 
slowly go through these. The Athletics won five, 19, five and 19, or 99 and 1914. The Yankees won their first World Series in 1918. Now skip the White Sox. The Black Sox actually won their series in 1919. The Yankees won in 27. They were not a dynasty. The Tigers won two there. And remember, real lineups every day. The Athletics won two. So Oakland's never won one. They all won in Philadelphia. Then the Yankees won 10 straight American League pennants. How about that? From 30 to 39. Cubs won in 30, 31, and 36. Reds won three consecutive National League pennants, 38, 39, and 40. The Red Sox won the World Series in 1940. How about that? The Yankees won one, two, three. They won six times in the 30s, and then in 42. Okay, now a skip from the war. Wow, the Browns won the World Series in 44 over the Cardinals. Is that right? Uh, the Yankees won in 45. And the Tigers, 40. Wow, that's interesting. 46, 47, 48. Cleveland in 49. And the Red Sox won the pennant in 50 over the, but lost to the Dodgers. And the Yankees were good in the 50s, but never won a World Series. 51, 52, 53. Got Cleveland right in 54. 55. They lost them all. Brooklyn won in 50 and won. So no giant come. 52, the Dodgers won in 53 and 55, and then the Braves won three straight. Dodgers moved to Los Angeles and beat the Red Sox in 59. Wow, that's interesting. The Yankees won in 60 over the Dodgers. Then the Giants won three straight, one, two, and three over the Yankees, Twins, and Yankees. White Sox beat the Reds in 64, beat the Dodgers in, or the Reds beat the White Sox in 64, and the White Sox beat the Dodgers in 65. The Pirates won, beat the Twins in 66. White Sox beat the Cardinals in 67. All right, 68 through 92. The National League dominated. The Pirates in 68. The Ast Really? The Astros in 69, and the Mets beat the Yankees in 70. Oakland won 71 and 72. The Pirates and Rangers won the World Series. Then the Big Red Machine, 3, 4, and 5. That's about right. The Rangers won the American League in 74. As happens in so, how the in the world did the New York Mets win the National League in 1978? Yankees went to the series in '79, and the Expos won it. There we go. Expos also won in '85. Isn't that interesting? Um, Toronto beat the, the Mets won in '86. The Tigers didn't win the Le American League in '84. Red Sox won the World Series in '88. That would be happy. Uh, okay, 94, Baltimore beat Atlanta. Now, that's interesting. They would have had to have created things for that. Red Sox won the 95 series and went in 96. Cleveland, 98-99. Anaheim in 2000 over the Mets. Cardinals won, won in 01 and 02. Dodgers in 06. The Red Sox... Lost to the Mets in 07. Is that the year the Mets lost the division in the last day? San Francisco was good at the end of the decade or at the beginning of the 2000s teens. Washington went to the World Series in 14 and lost to Seattle. The Cubs lost the 2016 World Series to Houston. Boston beat the Nationals in the 2018 World Series. And Milwaukee would have beat New York, according to OOTP, in this year's World Series. Okay. Now, leaderboards. We'll do this for a little bit. Okay. It wasn't supposed to input history from there. Um, career batting average. Rogers Hornsby at 363. All right, Hugh Duffy. Let's see. Ted Williams hit 435 in 1942. Jeff Heath hit 426 and Ruth hit 422 and 21 and 412 and 20. George Sisler in 1920. Wow, they're in the same league. So Babe Ruth won the batting title by two one thousandths of a percent. 
Um, nobody in modern times hit 400. That's interesting. I'm, so I'm looking through here. Wade Boggs hit 393 in 1987. Ted Williams in 41 hit 388, which is still pretty gosh darn impressive. Sam Musial hit 382 in 1950. Kirby Puckett 382 in 1987. Larry Walker hit 381 in 2001. Vlad Guerrero, 379 in 2002. So no George Brett, no um, Rod Carew. Okay. Uh, let's do, let's do hits. Uh, let's do home runs. So Harmon Killebrew is the all-time leader. Hit 66 in 1962. Mark McGuire hit 63 in 98. That's actually pretty good. Jimmy Fox, 63 in 32. I think that's with Philadelphia. Duke Snyder hit 60 in 54. It must have not developed Babe Ruth very well because he's not even in the high 50s. Nolan Arenado, Reese Hoskins, this year, as a matter of fact, with 59. A-Rod with 58. Kyle Schwarber with 58. Aaron Judge with 58 and 17. Killebrew, 57 for the Senators in 59. Trevor Story, 57 this year. Albert Bell, Rocky Calavito, Mark McGuire, Hack Wilson, Gorman Thomas, Hank Greenberg, Jim Rice, 55 and 79. His was 46. Kiner, Bryce Harper, 55 with Philadelphia. Oh, if only. Ken Griffey Jr., 99. Let's see. A Ruth's career high would have been 54 and 21. Willie Mays with 54 and 61. Mantle, 54 and 61, which is what he actually hit. Duke Snyder, 54 and 55. David Ortiz, 53 and 04. Glabar Torres, a lot of home. 53, Harmon Killebrew, 53 and 69. Ronald with 50 uh, this year. Hank Greenberg, Mel Ott, Christian Yelich, Willie Stargio with 52 and 66. Mo Vaughn, Aaron, 51 and 56. Mike Schmidt hit 75. That would be interesting. He made the Hall of Fame. That's what the asterisk means. Did 51 and 77, too. Lou Gehrig at 50 and 60 and 30. And this kind of goes on. All right, so career home runs. We'll do that one next. Hank Aaron. 765. Now, this is, of course, real career years. Um, so the game couldn't take you on past real life. And the war years, when we get to that point, um, so no boost for Williams and, and Feller. So Aaron at 765. Bond, 723. Pool host 693. It didn't retire him? I think it tried to retire him a year early. Obviously, no as played uh, lineups for 19. Uh, A Rod, 683. Willie May, 671. So we did a little bit better. Babe Ruth only hit 668. That's not bad. Jim Tomey at 64. Harmon Killebrew at 619. Williams, a lot more home runs, 603. Mantle at 590. Griffey Jr. at 589. Frank Robinson at 585. Double X at 581. Mark McGuire at 566. Rafael Palmero never failed the piss tests. 565. Mel Ott, Andy Matthews, Mike Schmidt, Gary Sheffield, 526. Vladimir Guerrero, Stanley Musial. Frank Thomas, Willie McCovey. Didn't make the Hall of Fame at 521 homers, huh? Willie Stargell, Andy Murray, Sammy Sosa didn't make the Hall of Fame either. Manny Ramirez did. 
Hasn't played since 11. Okay. Uh, Duke Snyder, 512. Chip Jones, Cal Ripken Jr., good numbers. Jeff Bagwell, Mickey Cabrera, Lou Gehrig, Reggie Jackson. They didn't make the Hall of Fame either. Ernie Bankston, that's interesting, 502. David Ortiz at 496. Yaz at 481. Even, the computer couldn't even put Fred McGriff in the Hall of Fame. Ad, Adrian Beltre, that's interesting, 452. Mike Piazza at 434. Norm Cash at 417. Rocky Colavito at 404. Jim Rice at 403. Andre Dawson at 402. Dwight Evans at 400 and didn't get in the hall. Todd Helton did at 398. Kiner should be at 398. He did that in a decade, for crying out loud. Gary Gaetti. The computer didn't put Harold Baines in the Hall of Fame either, just in case you care. Stanton at 366. Done that in 10 years. Matt Holliday. George Brett with 363. Jolton Joe DiMaggio at 356. Ron Gant sitting at 100 at 350th. Okay, let's do hits. 4240. So he would have barely passed Ty Cobb by two. Okay. Look at Henry Aaron, 3905. Musial at 3697. Eddie Collins Sr. at 3596. Tris Speaker at 3579. Yaz at 3489. Drew at 3418. Honus Wagner at 3404. Albert Pujols at 3350. Murray at 3349. Mays at 3323. Ripken at 32.92, A-Rod at 32.49, Molly at 32.47, Tony Gwynn at 32.36, Ricky Yount, Beltre, who's still playing, uh, Bonds, Nap LaJoy, or Lajoy, depending on how you want to say it, Paul Weiner, George Brett, Frankie Frisch, Melot, Rogers Hornsby, I'm not seeing Ted Williams here. Craig Biggio, Wade Boggs, Al Kaline, Sam Crawford, Roberto Clemente at 3006. It didn't put Kaline or, or Brooks, Brooks, Baines, or Brock. Sorry, they didn't take Baines or Brock, and they're just sitting outside of 3000. Simmons got in at 2991. Ichiro, but well, Drew didn't get 3000 hits. Babe Ruth at 2949. We will a killer 2877. Sheffield Jones and Griffey all over 2750. Goose Goslin. Jimmy Fox at 68. Lou Brock at Brooks Robinson did not make the Hall of Fame. Ted Williams only had 2,709 hits. That's interesting. Billy Buckner at 26.28. Manny at 26.20. Be curious what the computer... Mickey Mantle at 25.56. So you had to have 25.46 to make the top 100. Uh... Let's do season first. These are top 21 are impressive numbers. Jimmy Fox at 193. Hank Greenberg at 186. Fox at 180. Gehrig one year at 1930 at 180. Ted Williams at 175. Nolan Arenado at 2,169. Gil Hodges 167 and 51. Todd Helton 165 and 2002. Ted Williams 162 and 49. All right, let's go to the career leaderboard. Albert Pujol, second all-time. Henry Aaron at 2268. Barry Bonds at 2124. A-Rod at 2118. Babe Ruth, fifth. Jimmy Fox, sixth. Stan Musial, seventh. Ted Williams, eighth. Just need one more for 2,000. Lou Gehrig, ninth. Murray, tenth. Yaz, eleventh with 1956. 
Mays 12th, Ripken 13th, Al Simmons, Mel Ott, Rafi, Frank Robinson, Ty Cobb, Ken Griffey Jr., Gary Sheffield, and George Brett at 21. That's a pretty impressive list. Shall we go with stolen bases? Ricky Henderson, 1,315. Eddie Collins at 908. Brock at 899. Timmy Raines at 878. Ty Cobb at 862. Joe Morgan. And Willie Wilson with 743. Vince Coleman, 671. Ichiro at 583. All right, season record. Artie Latham. Ricky Henderson only stole 119 as his high, and that came at 83. 86, he stole 110. I don't think any game engine is really good at finding stolen bases. I think there's been more than 10 hundred stolen base seasons. But... Ricky's numbers were just above and beyond everything. Want to see strikeouts? Reggie Jackson struck out 2,628 times. Jim Tomey, A-Rod, Sammy Sosa, Adam Dunn, Derek Jeter, Andres Galarraga, Tony Perez, Willie Stargell, Mike Schmidt, David Ortiz. I'm surprised about Ortiz. Over the course of a season... Wow. Guess the numbers weren't updated for this year. Keon Broxton, 257. Can't wait to see the all time pitching strikeout leaders. All right, wins above replacement. Who does the game consider to be the greatest player of all time or greatest batter? It's going to tell me Willie Mays with 184.4. Tris Speaker, Barry Bonds, Babe Ruth. Remember, Babe didn't hit that many home runs. Aaron Collins, Williams, Cobb, Hornsby, Musial are in the top ten. Wagner, Mantle, Ott, Fox, Pujols, Yaz, Schmidt, Ripken, Robinson, and Joe Morgan. And DiMaggio was 21st. I'm trying to think if there's anyone that's obviously missing from from, well, from that. Best season by war. Ted Williams, 16 and 42. Mays with 15 and 62. DiMaggio, 14 and 42. Babe Ruth in 21. Wagner in 08. Mays in 64. Mike Trout, Babe Ruth. And 20, Duke Snyder and Stan Musial, 54 and 44. Jimmy Fox and 32. Schmidt and 76. We'll ignore the 1890s. Francisco Lindor in 2016. Mike Trout in 2014. Willie Mays. Those are the top 20 seasons. All right, let's go to pitching. We know that Cy Young and Walter Johnson are going to be on the top of the win list. Although Walter didn't win 400. Steve Carlton, number three all time at 353 with Don Sutton. They beat Kid Nichols. Christy Mathewson with 350. Roger Clemens with 334. Only 14 of 1300. Greg Maddox with 325. Pete Alexander with 322. Warren Spahn with 320. Did he have like 363? Nolan Ryan. Burt Blylevin, Gaylord Perry, Red Ruffing. Okay. Tommy John made the Hall of Fame at 294. Lefty Grove. Jim Cott made the Hall of Fame at 287. Epa Rixie. Robin Roberts. Bob Feller. Single season. Nobody in the modern era won... 30. No, Mike Cuellar did in 73. How about that? <coughs> Steve Carlton won 27 and 74. 
Drysdale 27 to 65. Lefty Grove 27 and 29. Bucky Walters 27 and 40. Gaylord Perry 26 and 73. Newhauser 20. Hall Newhauser 26 and 47. No, it does not like giving out wins, does it? Joe Nuxhall and Johnny Vandermeer with 26. And that's going to be it for that. ERA and a career. Sandy Koufax had a career ERA of 216. That's not bad. Then you got to go to lots of dead ball pitchers. Clayton Kershaw, 232, is 12 all time. Bob Moose at 238. You had to pitch 1,500 innings, I think. Alex Wood is 23rd all time at 251. Bob Veal, J.R. Richard. Uh, that's kind of one of those what ifs if he hadn't had the stroke. Three Finger Brown, Babe Ruth, 255 in his career. Joe Gibbon, okay. Madison Bumgarner, 34th at 262. Lots of names I don't recognize here. Noodles Hahn. Chris Sale, Garrett Cole, Johnny Vandermeer, Steve Carlton at 280. All right, let's take a look at the best seasons. Bob Gibson, pretty close, 121 7. That's very close. Vida Blue, 136 and 76. Nolan Ryan, a 139 and 72. Nolan Ryan, a 141 and 81. Clayton Kershaw, 139 and a half and 14. J.R. Oh my goodness, J.R. Richard, Don Drysdale. All right. How are we doing for time? We'll go a little bit longer. Career strikeouts. Well, no surprise, Nolan Ryan with 48 47. Steve Carlton, 4390. Roger Clemens, 4227. Randy Johnson, 4167. Then Don Sutton, Tom Seaver, Walter Johnson, Pedro Martinez, Bert Blylevin, Gaylord Perry, CC Sabathia, Greg Matthews, Bob Gibson, Phil Necro, Mickey Lolich, Fergie Jenkins, Tanana, that's interesting. Um, Eusena, Kurt Schilling, John Smoltz, Jim Bunning. And over the course of a season, Koufax struck out 372 and 63. Sam McDowell struck out 360 and 65. Chris Sale struck out 347 this year. Bob Filler comes back from the war and strikes out 345. Pedro's high was 336. J.R. Richards struck out 321. Okay, let's see. Hits allowed, strikeouts. Whip. Holy moly. Clayton Kershaw, 074 in 14, 075 in 19. Sutton, 076 in 66. That's better than Gibson, 76 and 66. Carlos Carrasco, my goodness. Pedro a couple times. Corey Kluber. So in the career, it looks like Clayton Kershaw, Chris Sale, Sandy Koufax, Rube Waddell, Garrett Cole, Ed Walsh, Madison Bumgardner, Addy Joss, Pedro Martinez, and Corey Kluber allow less than a base runner in innings. Interesting how the game uh, defaults to more modern pitchers for that. Don Gullet, a 104. So kind of when you're hot, you're hot, and when you're not, you're not. Records. Let's check some records. 
we did that. Um, anyone have five home runs? No, we only had one four home run game on the American League. And none in the National League. Pedro Martinez struck out 20 against Washington. Oh, no, for Montreal. On July, or June 14th, 1997. It's the only 20, game, 20 strikeout game thrown in the National League. And we've never had one in the American League. Pedro did it 18 twice for Boston and Chris Sale in 2018. Struck out 19. Tanana. Herb score. So strikeouts are pretty rare. Milestones. Nope. I want let's see perfect games Vic Willis for Boston against New York in 19-2 Bob Groom playing for Washington threw a perfect game against the White Sox in 1910 Then we go, no perfect games for a long time. Sandy Koufax threw a perfect game against the Colt 45s in 1962. And Denny LaMaster for the Braves no, threw a perfecto against Cincinnati in 1963. Don Sutton threw one against the Astros in 66. Bob Gibson did it against the, Met, uh, against the Mets. In 67, Ken Holtzman no-hit the Phillies while striking out 18 in 68. Dave Giusti no-hit a perfect game against San Diego in 69 for the Cardinals. Bob Gibson, did I say he had a perfect game? Uh, Vida Blue threw a perfect game on J June 1st, 1971 against New York. Ken Holtzman threw a perfect game for Oakland. That's Against Minnesota in 72. Mike Torres threw a no-hitter for Boston on July 4th, 1980. That's scary. Uh, Rick Roden went out in the morning and shot a 67 on the links and then threw a perfect game against the Padres in 82. Bob Welch for the Dodgers threw a perfecto against the Mets in 83. Brad Radke threw one against Oakland for Minnesota in 95. Roger Clemens got a no-hitter. How about that? Against Cleveland. Hopefully he won the game. Brian Anderson for Arizona. i assuming that's against the Cubs. Derek Lowe threw a no-hitter for Boston. Isn't that interesting? Oh, my goodness, and then here come the rash. Jason Vargas for Seattle against the White Sox. Zach Britton for Baltimore against Texas. Zach Greinke against uh, the Reds for the Dodgers in 2014. Johnny Cueto, perfecto against Philadelphia in 2014. Corey Kluber, perfect game against the Tigers. Corey Kluber, perfect game against Tampa Bay. He struck out 17. And Clayton Kershaw threw a perfecto against Washington. Walker Bueller no hit the Dodgers or no hit. Oh, you know what? It didn't get this year's um, trades in because Annabelle Sanchez isn't pitching for. Let's see what else we want to know. Triple crowns. Saw Young, Rubel. Heine Zimmerman, Rogers Hornsby, Babe Ruth did it in 20 and 21. Rogers Hornsby, Jim Bottomley, Rogers Hornsby again. Lefty Grove, Hack Wilson. Lefty Grove had 
four pitching triple crowns. Jimmy Fox, Carl Hubble, Ripper Collins, 41 homers. Bob Feller did it on the mound. Ted Williams did it in 42. Charlie Keller of the Yankees did it in 43. Johnny Mize, twice. Max Lanier during the war. Hal Newhauser, I think he did that in real life. Bob Feller, Ted Williams did it in 47. Ralph Kiner did it in 48, but the computer award didn't induct him in the Hall of Fame. Williams did it again in 49. Don Newcomb for the Dodgers in 1950. Vinegar Ben Mizell in 53. Willie Mays in 62. Orlando Cepeda in 64. Lots of pitchers. McDowell, Singer for the Dodgers. Tom Seaver, Nolan Ryan, 25-7, and seven, and struck out 308 and 72 with California. Ron Guidry did it in 78 with the Yankees. J.R. Richard, Dwight Gooden did it in 86. 85 was, that's a hell of a year. Mets won the World Series that year on the computer. Roger Clemens did it for the Red Sox in 89. Uh, let's see. Mike Piazza and Larry Walker in back-to-back -back years. How about that? Then Pedro in 99 and 2000. Javi Vasquez did it in the National League. Pool Holson in 04 and 09. Gio Gonzalez. Clayton Kershaw in 15. And Nolan Arenado in 17. Um, I'm not going to go through the cycles. Or the hitting streaks. Well, that's where we already are. I'm going to go through that either. Winning this manager? Jimmy Collins. Oh, these are all fake. These aren't real managers. Because Mickey Rivers was never measured. Never mind. Um, no, I don't want that. Hall of Famers. Oh, there's no pictures. I'm not going to do that. Let's pick a year. Pittsburgh actually won it in 90. That's not going to tell you much of anything. They beat the Yankees, which is interesting because the Yankees were terrible. Oh, no, that was 19. So that's how the computer thinks that the playoffs should go. Milwaukee didn't go very well. And I had the Yankees winning the National Le or American League. I'm curious about 78. How in the hell did the Mets win that American League, uh, National League East? Milwaukee and Texas you can make arguments for. And the Dodgers won it in real life. Let's pick another year. Oakland and Toronto. I got the National League right. I got the Houston and the Mets. You could have made a case for Toronto in 86. Oakland, I think, was a couple years away. Anyway. Let's see what else we get here. Postseason records. Let's do that and cl close this one out. Um, Career home runs. Manny Ramirez with 33. Most in a single postseason. Albert Pujols with 9 in 03. Bryce Harper. Let's take a look at him. Oh, he's still with Washington. He never signed elsewhere. He had 55 homers. So it doesn't have the transactions from this year. 
Oh, that's right, because there's no financials. So we can't sign with anybody else. Ah. Uh, Ike Boone hit 380 and 25 for the Red Sox. Ted Williams 352, Tris Speaker 345. All right, this is probably not the most exciting thing in the world to watch. Carly Stremski at 2,000. Okay. Yes, yeah, at 3,500 hits. Williams 2709, Rice 2500. Surprised Williams didn't have more hits. Bobby Dort, Wade Boggs, David Ortiz, Harry Hooper, Dustin Pedroia, and Dom DiMaggio. Home runs with the Red Sox 603 for Williams, 481 for Yastrzemski, 424 for Ortiz, 403 for Rice. 398 for Evans, Mo Vaughn with 279, Manny Ramirez with 253, Jimmy Fox 220, Bobby Doerr 194, and Tony Conglignero 193. Tony C had 49 homers in 69, and Rice holds the record with 55. Interesting. This was interesting. Okay, well, there's 42 minutes of my life that you, I'm not going to get back. So I will do one follow-up video. So if you have any request of anybody that you want to see, let me know in the comments, and I will find and post their stuff. Now, this was all until 2019. This was all as played from 1901 to 2018. I didn't change a thing. And by and large, you know, I think it did more than okay as far as simulating the entire history of baseball. I think it took about four hours for the computer to do all that. So OTP20, again, thanks to ID Jester. Uh, hit that like and subscribe. And like I said, I will do one follow-up video. And I'll give it a few days. So post teams, players, anything you want to see. For a career, and we can compare and contrast notes. I'm Ron Jacket. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you the next time.